Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the respiratory system again, specifically the muscles of the respiratory system. Now, when we talk about muscles that help you to breathe, we are mostly talking about muscles that will either help with expanding the thoracic cage or compressing the thoracic cage. And these muscles are either going to act kind of underneath the lungs to help with elongating or shortening the thoracic cage, or muscles that specifically act on the ribs to help with lifting the ribs or depressing the ribs. So to get started, let's take a look at this model where you can see the two lungs, but also what do you see underneath? You can see that you have this muscle here. So this muscle is generally a very rounded dome-shaped muscle. This is called the diaphragm. And if you look closely, you can see like you have muscular fibers here, but they're kind of going out in an array, making like that rounded dome shape. Now, when this muscle contracts, like ask yourself, what happens when a muscle contracts? It is going to shorten. And when you look at this muscle, like the relaxed shape is actually going to be rounded like this. But when it contracts, it's going to become shorter and flatter like this. And that is basically going to help with either expanding the length of the thoracic cage or constricting it to become shorter. So when the diaphragm contracts, the diaphragm becomes flat like this. You now have from here to here a longer space for the thoracic cage. This is when you inhale. But if you're going to relax the diaphragm as it becomes like round like this, that means that you only have from here to here. So this is going to be when you expire or exhale. This is a relaxed diaphragm. Well, if the diaphragm were to contract, you would have this much space versus relaxed this much space. So this is the large muscle that helps you to control the majority of your normal breathing. But just to be clear, you can either take like big breaths or deep or big deep breaths or very shallow small breaths. And you have another couple muscles that help to do that instead. So a group of muscles that you may be familiar with or remember from another video are your scalene muscles. And if you look closely at this model, like the scalene muscles are pretty well hidden. <laughs> so what you need to look for are some landmarks or structures that help you to identify them. So there's two of which that I would use. The first of which is the brachial plexus. You can see a big group of nerves here. And then once again, what does the word brachial mean? Brachial means arm, so the, this group of nerves is going to the arm. But furthermore, you have a blood vessel here as well. This is the subclavian artery. So the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery are going to be good landmarks to help with identify, identifying either the anterior or middle scalene. So anterior, or directly in front of these two structures, do you see this muscle right here? This is the anterior scalene. So the anterior scalene is going to be a little bit hidden, but it is going to go down to the first rib. Now, furthermore, a good landmark for identifying the anterior scalene is this nerve that is on top of it. This is called the phrenic nerve. And that actually relates to the last thing that we talked about, the diaphragm, because the phrenic nerve is going to go down and innervate the diaphragm to help with regulating your breathing rate. Now, furthermore, if this is the anterior scalene in front, guess what's right behind it? It's actually the middle scalene. So anterior scalene, middle scalene, and then you have one last scalene back here, which is the posterior scalene. And these scalene muscles are going to be on your ribs, your first and second ribs, and those are going to either, or these are going to help with elevating those ribs to help with increasing the size of the thoracic cage again. Now lastly, we have one more group of muscles here. And to identify these, a good thing to look for would be these particular bones. So these are called the ribs. And if you recall what the word for rib was, you might recall that you have costal cartilages, intercostal arteries, veins, and nerves. And then guess what these muscles are called? These are called intercostal muscles or intercostals. But you have two layers of these intercostals. If you look closely, you have these fibers that go out and up. These are called the external intercostals, and these are furthermore superficial. And then if you look closely, you also have these fibers that go out and down. If they go out and down, as well as being deeper, these are the internal intercostals. 
while these are the external intercostals. So the external intercostals, just to be clear, are going to help with lifting the ribs or elevating the ribs to, once again, help with increasing the thoracic cage, allowing you to inhale. But these that are out going out and down, the internal intercostals will depress the ribs to help you with expiring. So like the big breath in, external intercostals, big breath out, internal intercostals. And then with that said, that's about it for today. So if you have any trouble with the respiratory muscles, definitely look for those major landmarks to help you with identifying them or the orientation of the fibers, such as like for the intercostals. So with that said, that's about it. Good luck with your studying. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time.